So guys, let's talk about friction and the nature of friction. Friction is everywhere. If there's movement, you have friction. If you're producing something, there will be friction. If you have an inlet of work and an outlet of work, you will have a efficiency, which it sounds very beautiful, but actually it's a energy loss or friction account. So you can lose it either by sound, for example, a machine that makes a lot of sound. For example, if you go, your, your car will make a lot of sound. Wouldn't it be awesome that it will be totally quiet and use all that sound energy in producing movement? Yeah. Heat, it can also, as you know, the car, wouldn't it be awesome that the car doesn't heat up instead using that heat to move the gear? So instead you are heating up and that's why you need a cooling system because you need to constantly take out away the heat energy and the motion of particles that is more into the subatomic level or the atomic level also vibration you, you probably see your car vibrating drawers and something like that it moves all that all those energies are lost instead of being used into the movement of the machine now that is into cars let's talk about on piping and fluid dynamic systems this is typically done with a pipe or fittings and pumps we want to account for each one of them in general the more length we have in the system the more friction we have because we have more interaction between the molecules and the wall and there will be more energy loss which means we need to pay for that loss we need to add a pump which will uh, cost us money, energy and we don't want to do that we want to minimize the friction so here's a small diagram on how the fluid crashes with the roughness of the material right here the more force you exert, the more friction you get. Which types are we going to study here? Mm, essentially, due to pipe roughness. So here, even though you don't see it, or it's so microscopical, when flow goes here, it will crash in the walls and lose energy. Fittings, any kind of fitting, for example, let's say an elbow, which is a very common fitting, if you want to bend the flow. Well, imagine you are a flow and you crash directly to this wall and eventually you move to the right. So this clash or crash right here means loss of energy. And the valves, well, imagine this valve, instead of going straight forward, you're going to go like this. And of course, you know, once again, if you change direction, you lose a little bit of momentum, energy. So that's some bulbs. And pump and compressors, actually, the same of fitting some bulbs. Let's say here goes the flow, and then it crashes to the fan, and then it's completely crashing everywhere. And then it goes away. This is actually considered in the efficiency, so technically speaking, we are not going to study this. Just know that the pump and compressor friction is considered in the friction loss, uh, in the efficiency of the pump or the compressor. The ones that we are going to actually calculate are these fittings and valves. So for this example, let me just tell you what generates friction. This inlet generates friction this flow through this pipe generates friction this fitting right here, elbow, generates friction all these three feet generate friction due to wall friction this one right here is also another fitting that generates friction loss because you are changing the direction once again, wall friction, once again, elbow friction we have an inlet, whenever you have an inlet many times you have a small friction loss and once again, we have an inlet to a pipe, let's say outlet, sorry, to a pipe, and you get here. So that's, for this case, uh, we have a valve here, and we have another valve that's 
also going to cause a friction loss. So you can see we have also a pipe right here and a pipe right here. We're going to have friction loss here. And this is a very interesting equipment. I don't know what it is. It sounds, I don't know if it's a small reservoir or heat exchanger, whatever it is, will cost, of course, another loose loss of energy. So, one thing is to know where to lose friction and another thing to do is how to calculate the energy required. So guys, one thing you get when you subscribe or enroll to any of my courses is a premium membership. And what do I mean when premium membership is essentially that you are my priority member. What does that mean is essentially if you send me an email or if you post a question in any of the practice, course or even quiz sections, I will answer you as soon as possible. And that is a thing I don't usually do in YouTube. I love answering questions in YouTube, but you are now my member, you are my student, you want to learn and I want you to learn in this course. So whatever doubt you have, you can send it either via email or post it here in the questions and I will answer you as soon as possible. Or being lost by friction. So as I told you before in the energy outlet, which is the right side, we need to add it here because it's going out similar to turbine. We cannot add it here because this is inlet and friction is never inlet, we always lose energy due to friction. And since we want positive values, add it to the right. It's pretty similar to work outlet, but the only little thing is that we are not using this to generate energy. Because this we use it to generate energy in the form of electricity, which means money. But this is just going to go dissipate, will hit a little bit the pipe, will make noise, will crash, uh, all the things I told you before. So, oh. in this section we will get the total value of the energy lost uh, due to friction. So, for example, this will be given as a number because we are not going to study that deep the friction loss in this chapter. We're going to see it, analyze it, and calculate the sign in block number three, which is called friction factor and, of course, energy loss due to friction. We're going to see wall friction loss and we're going to see fittings and valves friction loss. Anyways, let's check out this note number one on friction loss. So, in many textbooks, they use the concept of meter or feet, which I already told you is essentially, you already have, let's say, a amount of energy per unit mass, that is joule per kilogram, which is exactly to have meters to the second power and seconds to the second power. The only way to get meters is by the division of gravity. So, in many textbooks they show you this value which is HL, which means the friction loss due to any, let's say, wall friction, fitting, or whatever, but they use this meter of fit. So, for example, they will tell you this is 5 meter friction loss, which is nice because you can actually compare this with, I don't know, maybe the you have A here, you want to go here up to B and the friction equivalent to that will be 5 meters so you are losing 5 meters due to friction but I actually prefer using HF since I use the mechanic equation with the value on gravity so the only thing you need to do is get this value, the 5 meters multiply it by gravity which is about almost 10 meters per square uh, per second to the second power and you will have something about 50 joules per kilogram being lost due to friction okay uh, and as I told you before we can compare directly the loss so if they tell you 5 meter well that's the equivalent to have a fluid from A to B transported in a 5 meter height 
or for example two meter two meter tank height and as I told you before if you have two meter just multiply it by 9.8 and you get this value right here this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.